Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the Dark Table from A to Z series. My name is Hal and today we're going to be looking at the new module RGB primaries. Let's first read through the description from the fine manual. RGB primaries is used to adjust the hue and purity of the RGB primary colors, i.e. which red, green and blue they represent, while leaving uncolored gray pixels unchanged. In addition to preserving gray pixels, the opponency relationship between the colors are also preserved under this adjustment. If you increase the purity of the blue primary, the opponent yellow's intensity increases to balance things out. If you twist the blue hue towards cyan, the opponent yellow is twisted toward orange. The module is essentially a channel mixer as in the color calibration module, but with a different interface. Even though the sliders are named red, green, and blue, all adjustments are global and affect the overall colimetry of the image, just like a channel mixer does. When applied before the filmic RGB or sigmoid tone mapping modules, RGB primaries can be used to make small adjustments to colorimetry. When applied after the tone mapping modules, it may be used to apply creative edits such as tinting. All right, let's dig into what that means. First, let's open the module interface. If you don't have it in your preset, you can choose another preset or you can always search for it here. There it is, simple interface. What does it do? It allows us to change the you and the purity of each color separately keeping in mind that whenever we do that we are affecting the opposite color as well let's go through the module controls the first one is red hue and this one shifts it towards yellow the positive value so towards the right uh, or towards magenta which is the negative value you can see that on the bar as well let's i picked this image i think we've used it before no not i think i'm pretty sure we've used this before but i picked it because it has all of the primary colors and we can see what happens so i'm going to shift it towards magenta and you can see the color of the red changing towards yellow you can see that the effect on the red if we change the histogram to a vector scope if you need any help with any of the modules that I'm using then you would find a corresponding video in the dark table from A to Z series or you can leave a question below we should be able to see the effect not only on red but as well on the other colors All right, the slider under it is the red purity. The purity of a color is how close it is to its hue, so the absence of white and black in it. Uh, for me, it's very close to saturation. I'm not absolutely sure it means exactly the same. Color theory is quite complicated. After that, we have exactly the same couple of sliders, one for the green hue and one, well, one for green color and one for the blue color. And we can do the same. The green one will shift towards yellow or towards cyan. Yellow, cyan you can see that it's affecting the other colors, mainly red as well. Then the purity is the same. And if we go back to the description, it said that when we change the purity of a color, the opponent's 
intensity increases to balance things out. All right, I had to lift that up, so I'm back. Because I thought intensity was the same as purity or saturation. I know, not probably not exactly the same, but it is more or less the same. It is the absence of mixed colors with the hue that we're working with. And it is. So what we're saying here is if you change the purity of one color, you're actually as well adding to the intensity between quotes, the saturation of the opposing color. We'll try it again with the green. And we can see that it increases almost all of it, but probably more of the green. It's going to take some working with the module to decipher all of those exactly what they're doing. But we'll soldier on now since uh, this is the A to Z series. And as usual, all of that will be put to use in a showcase session. We still have two sliders to go through, and those are well, first, let's discuss the blue hue. The blue hue shifts towards magenta or towards cyan. And the purity is the same as the other two. Then we have the tint hue. And when applied after tone mapping, I'm reading from the fine manual again, this control allows the gray achromatic parts of the image to be tinted. When applied before tone mapping, it acts like a white balance control. Okay. So we can either use this as for white balance if we put it before any tone mapping module that we're using, or as in uh, tone mapping modules are the filmic and sigmoid. That's all as far as I can remember. One of those two. We can use it for white balance, and if we put it after those two, then we can use it for creative control. And the last one is the tint purity of the tint that we're applying to the gray parts of the image. Let's see how that would work. It's now on zero. I can see I can shift towards blue. Oh, I presume that's not going to do anything if I don't change the purity since the purity is at zero. We'll start by putting the purity higher. And you can see the effect. You can look here, shifting almost the whole image towards red now. And then I can change the hue. All right, that's it. A simple module from the controls point of view. I think quite a, maybe not complicated, but it's gonna take some uh, digging into the controls and practicing the effects that they have on the photos before we can master it. Like I said, all of that is going to be followed up by a uh, showcase session where we take a photo and try to apply this before and after the tone mapping modules and see how it works. I hope that you found this video interesting and entertaining. If you have any comments, questions or additions, please leave them below and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.